we're going to take a look at what happens with your drummer track that maybe you had in a previous project in 10.8.1 or before when you open it in Logic 11. When you open this up, this, is, uh, this initial track is from a previous version. It has all the same levels. It has all the same effects. Uh, and when you click on any of these regions, it prompts you with what you want to do. It says, this drummer region was created in a previous version of Logic Pro. Convert to MIDI to preserve the original state or update to a new session player performance. So you can convert it or update it. You can also just play it as it is. And it sounds really close to what it sounded like before. You can still go through and add all the effects you want and mix it how you want. We also have the new drummer in 11. This is what that sounds like. Uh, I loaded up, as far as I could tell, the exact same scenario. The drums look very similar in their regions here. Not everything is the same. The fills are different. And there's some other differences as well. But there's an overall sound difference that's quite distinct. So what is different about these two things? Let's open up the actual drummer track stacks here, and you'll see in the original from previous versions that we have some basic effects. We have channel EQ and compression on, a, on the first couple, couple compressions here, uh, compressors. We have a few EQs over the toms, one over the room mic, one over the punch mic, but it's relatively simple for this kit. Let's look at the same SoCal producer kit in the new version. After we get to 20 with the leak, which is still there, we then have a number of other buses and essentially auxiliary tracks that we're using for the rest of it. And we've expanded it. We have this one for the snare kick. Um, we have this here. What does that say down at the bottom? Reverb. Linear, reverb room, reverb plate, a sub, attack, crunch, and pump. So a lot of extended things here. Look at the number of buses on the snare. Bus 8, 9, 10, 13, 18, and 19. So it's going to all of these other things here. Whew, this is a routing extravaganza. And while I don't mind it, I think that certainly they put in some more effort to making these original drums sound good. If you were to turn off everything here, um, let's turn off everything past that leak track. Let's see what that sounds like. Definitely still some differences inside there. Uh, part of it would be the inclusion of the chroma glow on the overall output. And I'm wondering what those of you on Intel computers are, are seeing with this. It just wouldn't load. And so you're already missing out on one piece of the new drummer track even though it said that you could use these instruments if you don't have one of the key effects on the output, then that's a little different. The other thing that's a little bit different, let's come in here to the drum kit and we'll load these drum kits side by side. Even though these were both the SoCal kits, they've chosen a few different drum pieces. So this one is the Studio Felt, and this one is the Birch Punch. I wonder. Uh, 
Oh, I've got that muted. There we go. It's still going through a whole different effects chain. So the one good thing is you're going to have a close approximation when you're bringing in the other kids and you can still continue to work with them. That's point number one. Point number two, you're gonna have a lot of different sounds coming from this drummer that we didn't have before. So perhaps it's worth exploring and seeing exactly what is new and different and what is continuously the same. The last thing I wanna try, and this is uh, going to be interesting. We're gonna delete that for a moment. I want to option drag this one down into that kit. So the last thing you can do is use your previous drummer regions with the new session drummer. And that way you can actually still retain the performance, but take advantage of the better sounding mixed kits. Samples are all, as far as we can tell, the same. They haven't replaced out the drum kits. They've just changed the functionality and the mix of these. So simple answer, if you're in the middle of a big project, maybe don't upgrade yet, finish it and then upgrade. If you're wanting to take advantage of the new things, but you really have something locked in, render those out to audio files so you can bring them in. And then you can mess around with the kits and see if you can get a better sound that you really like. Also, you can retain or transition your files from the old or to the new. Hope this was helpful looking at this. Uh, if we find some more additional information about this, we'll of course share it. But I just wanted to make sure that you understand some of the different elements of what's happening with the new versus old drummer.